Our next story is also rooted in the not-too-distant past. It's about a group of old men who are still in one way boys. They shared an experience in the 1930s which affected them and affected the whole country. But now those who are left are beginning to wonder if their story is going to be around when they are not. It was a massive youth employment program at a critical time in this nation's history and in these young men's lives. And for years you could find the Civilian Conservation Corps story told at this museum in an old officer's quarters building at Jefferson Barracks. But not anymore. So how long have you guys been in this building? We've been since 1985. And why now? Why is it coming to an end? Uh, we're running out of money to maintain it. This year, Director yeah. Harry Dallas was like putting himself out of a job, shutting the CCC the Museum down, packing it up, and shipping it off. Yeah. We're running out of money. And I guess you're running out of members, too. That's the we're reality. We're running out of members is why we're running out of money. It was really inevitable. The museum has been funded by members of the National Association of CCC Alumni. And at age 87, Harry Dallas is one of the young guys. The average guy for a CCC boy would be about 90. Yeah, they still refer to themselves as CCC boys. And there were three million of them. In 1933, as part of the New Deal, President Franklin Roosevelt created the Civilian Conservation Corps, a way to put unemployed young men to work during the Depression. And it kept going until young men were needed for a different government job, fighting World War II. City kids, rural kids, black kids, white kids, they signed up for six months in the CCC and they could stay as long as two years. The pay was $30 a month and most of it was sent home to their families. In the late 1930s, a teenager like Harry Dallas couldn't find work in rural southern Illinois, so he joined the Civilian Conservation Corps and his family was glad to have the money and one less mouth to feed. He was assigned to a CCC camp in Galesburg, Illinois. I myself did not realize how many camps there were and how much was going on because I did not know. You knew your camp? You I knew, knew what my you did? camp. Yeah. I knew we had some other camps around the area we played ball against. You know, that kind of stuff. But as far as the, the amount of camps and what was going on at that time, I didn't know. By 1936, there were more than 2,600 CCC camps all over the United States. The Galesburg camp concentrated on soil erosion projects. And all over the country, CCC boys were planting trees. We planted three and a half billion trees throughout the United States in that nine and a half year uh, period of the CCC. And they created parks, built lodges and shelters, cleared roads. Babbler State Park was a CCC project and the site of a reunion in 1998. I, made it. I worked on the stables, the, the roads. Nature Center. This was a get-together of guys who worked all over the place, and they had stories about what they did and where they did it. After all, reunions are all about telling stories. And it was easy, so many years later, to look back fondly on those days. Parts of the old CCC films do make it look a lot like summer camp. But there were winters as well. Life was not comfortable. The work was tough, and there were those who hated living in camps. Many were far from home for the first time. There were those who wanted to be here, but many others were here simply because they had nothing else. Being in the CCC back then really wasn't anything to brag about. You had to admit that you were poor, and that's no great deal of honor in admitting that you were so-called poor po folks in those days, even though poverty was a common thing. And I always p tell people that I wasn't all that poor. My family just didn't have any money. <laughs> and you know, this is a... It was unlike speaking. anything most of them had but, ever uh, experienced, uh, and it changed many lives in these formative years. Many CCC boys still believe in the value of national service to the country and to the individual. And for some, it really did set them off 
on a straighter and narrower path. The CCCs was the saving grace in my life. I was a kid in Boston and I could drive and I thought it would be a wonderful thing to drive somebody else's car around not having my own. And uh, the precinct sergeant told me, Conley, you're going to go to jail and that'll be the end of you. You'll be a bum the rest of your life. So between him and my uncles, I ended up in the CCC and I never looked back. In the 10 years since this reunion, the get-togethers have gotten less frequent. There are fewer CCC alumni around these days, and most just don't get around like they used to. But they were able to stay in touch through their St. Louis-based organization. Feel a little sad about all this? Oh, very sad. It, it's, okay. it's a turning... I've been associated with this for 25 years. When people read that the CCC Museum was closing down, they started showing up. And I guess everybody said, uh, wow, uh, didn't know you were here. Didn't know we were here. Right. Meant to come in here many times, but uh, drove by it, but never came in. Some of what has been stored and exhibited at the Jefferson Barracks Museum has been sent to the Smithsonian. Other stuff is going to Edinburgh, Virginia, the site of the first CCC camp. A lot of photographs will stay with the St. Louis County Parks District. The museum never really got much walk-in traffic, but a lot of people did come here by appointment, and they headed upstairs. This was a research center. That was our primary goal here. The museum was a sideline. The research was the, the primary goal. That was what we were here for. People looking up their own records, people, people up, look up their parents' records. Their, their uncle, their cousin, their brother, their yeah. grandparents. Uh, the archives will still be available, just not here anymore. They'll be at the Smithsonian or with the Virginia CCC organization, which is also taking over this group's shrinking membership list. Across the hall, Donna Broom was wrapping up her job, putting the finishing touches on the CCC newspaper. This is the last issue. And what we're covering presently is the 75th anniversary celebrations that are happening throughout the United States. What I'm working on now Once is there was a staff of 12 here. Literature. On its last days, it was down to three. In 1990, 12,000 CCC boys belonged to this organization. At the end, membership was under 3,000. It's not just the end of the organization, the closing of the museum, and the shipping off of the archives. Now this kind of stuff. It's really about the story of the Civilian Conservation Corps that was here. That's what they were preserving. And Harry Dallas knows that there were young people who came through here, looked at the picture of FDR, and said, Who's that? You just hope, though, that in 25 or 50 or 100 years, people know what this was. Uh, we hope so. That was our aim. That was our aim by organizing this group uh, back in the, in the 1970s. The legacy will be with this country a long time. The parks, picnic shelters, dams, retaining walls, and of course, all of those trees. They did that, built a part of America. And this statue and others like it will still be out all over the country. And it may prompt somebody in the future to do a bit of digging to come up with the story of the CCC Boys. <laughs>